If there was one footballer you could describe as the perfect embodiment of a tank, to me, without a single doubt in my mind, there is no example of a player as perfect as Bastian Schweinsteiger. Back when he was in his prime, every time I watched him, his face honestly just always kind of scared me. And every time I saw him, I always just kind of thought of him as the Terminator. Back in the 2010s, when Germany and Spain would frequently battle it out, it would always surprise me that even between Andres Iniesta and Xavi, Bastian Schweinsteiger's brilliance would always be up there as well, with the two saying that he was one of the most brilliant and difficult midfielders they've ever faced on the pitch. And I always thought that was kind of strange because Schweinsteiger was one of the slowest players I've ever watched, even slower than Sergio Busquets. Yet somehow the man was always everywhere on the pitch. On the defensive side, he was an absolute wall. Despite his non-existent speed, Schweinsteiger always seemed to strip the ball from even some of the most skilled and pacey dribblers on the pitch. And the way that he could distribute the ball and maintain possession, heck, was almost like a blend of Chabi Alonso's range and division sprinkled in with Busquets' ability to avoid the press and get the ball out of trouble. And I rarely, if ever, saw the man losing in a battle of physicality. Just an incredibly strong frame that almost never went down. Then when you combine that endless stamina, brute strength, defensive presence, incredible passing, and intelligent playmaking with an absolute cannon of a shot, being one of the greatest long distance shooters I've ever seen, scoring the most insane and unexpected goals in some of the biggest moments in football. It's easy to see why Bastian Schweinsteiger is the perfect example of a tank on the pitch. But when I saw this list of the best players to retire in 2019, Schweinsteiger being at four kind of surprised me. Honestly, they're all legends, and aside from Chavi, you can really go and mix it all around. But it did kind of get me thinking about just how underappreciated and underrated Bastian Schweinsteiger was. Perhaps because of his position, or even just how he looked like a turtle on the pitch, moving at the same speed off the ball as he did while dribbling. Many seem to overlook the absolute footballing genius the man was. There's a reason why Bayern and Germany's most important players and managers praise Schweinsteiger as the heart and engine of the squad, being so good in his long prime that they would describe him in German as Fußballgott or football god, simply because he was just so good at every aspect of the game. Perhaps the reason why Schweinsteiger was cursed to have non-existent speed on the pitch was because when he was younger, he would barely even run. The young Schweinsteiger almost went down the route of becoming a professional skier. And thank goodness that didn't turn into reality, because that would have been a waste of an insane footballing talent. But despite the absence of any speed on the pitch, his football IQ and technical skill was as sharp as the skates he wore to shred the ice, with natural talent for the game that far surpassed his younger brother who had even started playing football before him. Because as early as 14, scouts would already find him and recruit him to play for Bayern Munich's youth program, quickly becoming recognized enough to be called up for the German national team at the age of 16, even captaining his Bayern youth teams to the under-17 and under-19 Bundesliga titles, looking like a veteran amongst boys. However, surprisingly, despite the maturity of his football IQ, off the pitch, the young Schweinsteiger was quite the hothead and troublemaker. In his younger years, he would be caught speeding a ridiculous 240 kilometers or 150 miles per hour frequently partying before matches, and even sporting some pretty wild haircuts. He would even once smuggle a girl at two in the morning inside Bayer's training grounds just to use the jacuzzi together. And when caught by the security guard, he would even claim that she was his cousin. And they definitely weren't wearing any Bayern kits. But thankfully, it was his girlfriend. He was so wild that Angela Merkel, the former chancellor of Germany, who just quite happens to be a huge football fan, had to personally sit and talk with the younger Schwan Einsteiger, just to set him straight and tell him to become a more responsible and mature professional. And in Schweinsteiger's own words, when the Chancellor tells you to do something, you have to listen. But interestingly enough, even UEFA tried to hide some of the young Schweinsteiger's wild antics. But of course, this is the internet, and some of his private information is still around. But you'd be surprised just how much of your personal information is out there too, because it's being sold online all the time without you even knowing it. That's why you get random spam mail, emails, robocalls, or might even get some of your personal information used and stolen. 
because every time you use your information to sign up for something online, or if there are ever any leaks or data breaches, data brokers collect it and sell it online. You have the right to contact these data brokers to delete any information they have on you, but there are hundreds and it can take years to get them to comply. However, thanks to today's sponsor, Incogni, they'll reach out to hundreds of data brokers and do the messy work for you, requesting that your personal information be removed from their databases. All you need to do is sign up with Incogni using the information you want removed, grant Incogni the right to work on your behalf, and then just sit back and watch as they take care of everything. Before using Incogni, I honestly got so many robocalls and junk mail, having no idea how they got my name, my personal email, and my personal phone number. But now, thanks to Incogni, it stopped and now I feel a lot safer with my private information gone. So if you're tired of robocalls, junk mail, or just want to secure your private information like I do, use my code RAYMAR in the link below and you'll get 60% off your annual Incogni plan. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. But as Schweinsteiger began to mature in his career, he would slowly but surely turn into that absolute tank on the pitch, eventually becoming the main motor and engine that would propel the German national team back to glory and to help secure Bayern Munich's unquestionable dominance. And maybe most of you might think, how the heck was Bastian Schweinsteiger the engine of his squads? And I get what you're trying to say. Schweinsteiger did share the midfield with the legends like Thomas Müller, Arjen Robben, Frank Ribéry, Tony Cruz, Mesut Ozil, heck, even Philipp Lahm and and many more. And while those players I mentioned individually are all geniuses, there was nobody more involved with the overall momentum and movement of the ball than Schweinsteiger. And for those who never really watched Bayern or Germany play in the early 2010s, Schweinsteiger was truly the conductor of the symphony. Because even with the tremendous talent he played with, he was the backbone of the midfield. And it's hard to notice because most of the time, compared to his teammates who were significantly more flashy and exciting to watch, Schweinsteiger was mostly a chameleon blending into the background. And I'm sure you've heard the famous quote by Vicente del Bosque that goes, If you watch the game, you don't see Busquets. But if you watch Busquets, you see the whole game. But I honestly think that that statement can be applied to Schweinsteiger as well. He was like a jack of all trades on steroids. Whether you needed a rock solid defensive presence, a playmaker in the middle, or someone you could trust the ball with without losing possession, he was always the go-to guy. And because of his incredibly slow speed, he didn't really look that impressive, and you never really noticed him much. But he was a true workhorse. Schweinsteiger hustled like crazy, doing all the dirty work defensively while still contributing greatly to the attack. I remember whenever I would watch Schweinsteiger, I was always shocked at how he was always in the right position to snatch up all the loose balls, because I thought to myself there was no way he was doing it with speed. Just the pure football IQ to be in no rush, yet know exactly where to be to make the most impact on the pitch and break up the opposition attack. And like the Terminator, Schweinsteiger did not stop running after the ball. And what made it even worse for the opposition is that even after doing all that, he was always there as the perfect outlet pass to bail his teammates out of the press and you knew he wasn't going to make any mistakes. But sadly, those aspects don't really get recognized as much when it comes to highlights or even when you're casually watching live on TV. But where Schweinsteiger really let his presence be known was when he stopped blending into the background and shifted to the attack. Because passing-wise, he was a true maestro with the ball. His passing accuracy was pinpoint, and his vision was on par with even some of the best long-range passers the game has seen. Even compared to Tony Cruz and Chabi Alonso, his long balls both in the ground and on the air were right up there. But especially with his short passing distribution, you just knew the ball was safe with Schweinsteiger, especially when he's only being pressed by a single player, because very few players had the physicality to bully this tank off the ball. And considering his main position as a deep lying midfielder, Schweinsteiger was the link that really connected Bayern and Germany's defense and attack, making the most out of his teammates and making it as easy as possible to play the way that they play best. But if there was one aspect of Schweinsteiger's game that was truly impossible to ignore, it was his long distance shooting. If you gave Schweinsteiger enough space from outside the box, he was capable of blasting the ball to the top corners or cheekily striking the ball on the ground to the bottom corners. And he was always known to play his absolute best when the lights were brightest and the opponent the toughest. Like how in the 2010s, right behind Spain's insane dynasty. I think many can agree that Germany was the second best international side in the world. 
And in the 2008 Euros final, Spain and Germany would absolutely battle it out. And Schweinsteiger played close to flawless. Because honestly, if you were to put Schweinsteiger in that Spanish squad, his brilliance would have fit just right in. But of course, we're talking about a prime Spain, who I personally believe were the best international dynasty of all time. And as great as Germany were, they just couldn't beat them. And they would face off again for the 2010 World Cup semi-final in a truly hard-fought battle, with Schweinsteiger just seemingly always there to deny Spain from scoring and stopping their advances, while showing playmaking just as brilliant as Spain's best midfielders. But once again, they would fall to their Spanish rivals with just a single goal. But it would be in the 2014 World Cup where Schweinsteiger's incredible international performances would finally pay off. Because despite how stacked Germany's midfield was, Schweinsteiger was just as ruthless and consistent as ever, and he would play perfectly in the last World Cup first country. In the final, stopping the Argentinian attack several times and playing truly brilliant passes all match long, finally winning the World Cup trophy first country after years of just barely missing out. And you need no further look at the fact that it was Schweinsteiger who lifted the trophy first country to see just how crucial and important the man was for the squad. And it's easy to see that without their engine Schweinsteiger and not having anyone to replace his masterful presence on both ends of the pitch, the German would become a much weaker side, underperforming in every major international tournament since he left. And despite winning 8 Bundesliga titles and 7 German Cups, his 2012-2013 season for Bayern really sums up just how crucial he was in winning the treble, with his teammates and manager Jupp Heinz proclaiming him the best midfielder in the world, while winning the German Footballer of the Year award. But if you really want to know just how good and underrated Schweinsteiger was, you just need to simply look at the fact that besides his speed, he had no other flaws in his game. His versatility to play in any part of the midfield, on both ends of the attack and defense, while always playing at the very best when the stakes were highest. It only makes sense why he was known in Germany as a footballing god.